and I'm excited that we have so many people joining. Uh, there are still a few people logging in. And so what we're going to do is just wait another 30 seconds and then I will get started. Um, if you were just in the networking session, this will feel familiar. Uh, it'll be similar, but we're going to dive deeper into some of the um, ex exploration of the program. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, Cedric. <laughs> Um, okay, so there is the chat box on the uh, Tennessee CTE page. We used that very successfully in the last training. Um, and I see people are already in there chatting. Good morning. Uh, in the chat box, if you can sort of just say hello and maybe say what you teach, that would be great. And also, I kindly request if you would like to leave your email at the end of the session, I'm going to email uh, the PowerPoint as well as some additional documents that can help you get started in Learning Blade. So, out of curiosity, and um, these, because this is not a networking session, y'all are muted, and I apologize for that. So, the chat box is going to be our good friend this morning. If you use Learning Blade, go ahead and, and maybe leave us a message in that chat box and I can share that, uh, your story of how you use it, uh, your short sentences on how you use it with the participants. As well, please use that chat box to ask any questions. My amazing co-host Paula will be just, uh, you know, interrupting or sharing uh, whenever a question pops up. So. Let's get started and uh, let's please do use that Tennessee CTE chat box for this session um, to engage. Yeah, no long time no see, Cedric. Uh, all right, so Learning Blade, you can get your license by going to learningblade.com slash TN. I'll share that again at the end uh, if this is something that looks like it works for you. Um, and yeah, STEM PLTW teachers, we're excited to have you. Uh, Learning Blade is a middle school uh, design for middle schools, but we find it also has a lot of use in high school as well. And actually also I have some, a lot of gifted and talented teachers in the, er, in the elementary schools using it. So if you teach STEM in ninth through 12th grade, hang on, there's a lot here for you. And um, Sumner County, thanks for joining Jeff and Lisa. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Um, what is Learning Blade? It is a STEM toolbox. So we are an online program and this is really, I gotta like super hone in on this uh, because of COVID-19. Each student has a unique login. It is web-based. Um, students log in and they have access to 400 online lessons aligned to grades five through nine standards, Tennessee standards middle school, I'm sorry, uh, math, science, English, social studies, and technology, pretty cool. So it is also a clever ready program. So if your district, if Sumner County does clever, we can do clever with you. Um, and we look forward to that. And it's very easy for a school to share Learning Blade to the whole district in seconds using clever. Um, so the toolbox that is Learning Blade has this interactive element. I, uh, I like to think that this should take up 85% of the screen. That's where most people tend to lean. 400 online lessons, about 100 careers and technologies. So we do STEM in computer science with a focus on the career and the technology and on reading informational text. Um, but our toolbox is also a resource for PDF lesson plans for at-home assignments that you could give for offline unplugged activities for students to do. Um, so we have those design thinking activities. Those are challenge, group challenges. Um, I'll share some of those in this session and talk about how you could use the design thinking for virtual group challenges or for in-class group challenges. Um, we have hands-on projects. Those are meant to be open-ended writing prompts uh, journal entries, as well as hands-on um, recyclable material projects. So one of them is build a stethoscope, right? But we're, our model is using a tissue paper towel uh, roll for the listening device and then a, a plastic recyclable bottle for the, for the actual stethoscope part. 
Um, we have activities for 3D printers. If anyone that's in this session has won a 3D printer, go ahead and put that down there. But we have awarded in Tennessee probably close to 50 3D printers in the last couple of years. And the way we do that, good morning, Dave, is um, David, is we, uh, when your school completes 5,000 lessons of the online portion, that online interactive element in a school year, what we do is we, um, we share, uh, we just send you a 3D printer. So we would love to do that with you guys. Um, and Cedric, can you just confirm you're seeing my screen with the eight circles on it? That'd be great. Or Paula? Yeah. I see it. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. And thanks, Carlos, for leaving your, um, your email address. Yeah, Carlos, in the correctional facility, uh, just, if, just a quick chat with you. Do you guys have inter internet access for your um, students? If not, some of these PDF lesson plans could be really useful for you. So hope, and I'd love to work with you. Um, there's Rick Stearns from Lakeland saying they've won 3D printers, plural. They've actually won multiple 3D printers. Go Lakeland. Um, you guys have really found a way to integrate Learning Blade into your STEM classes. Thank you. Um, we do have parent discussions, table talk conversations paper craft figures, some coding activities, career videos. So there's a lot in the toolbox um, that you can use. It is aligned to standards. Is it looking familiar, Cedric, this presentation? Uh, so uh, again, I, for my middle schoolers, teachers, professionals out there, Perkins 5 was reauthorized, Perkins 4 was reauthorized as Perkins 5, and it now has a specific emphasis on career and awareness career development activities in the middle grades. And Learning Blade can absolutely be a, um, a bullseye on hitting that target. Um, so what we have are these missions in Learning Blade, career clusters. Uh, I'm gonna show you more about these, but each mission is looking at different career clusters. And really, we, we take this, this philosophy, you can't be what you can't see. So in the chat box, if you'd like, I would, I would like, uh, feel free to um, type down, what do you think like the most, uh, most, desired, most desired careers for kids these days are? Just seeing if anyone's gonna chat that in. Um, but you know, obviously uh, doctors, right? Uh, lawyer, SpaceX engineer. Yeah, Kevin, that's a great one. Um, for sure. You know, I, I, I think the, what SpaceX is doing is so incredible. Watching the rockets land back on the floating ships at sea. Like, come on, that's incredible. Um, YouTuber, Heather, that's exactly right. I, I, kids want to be what they see, right? They gamers, they game a lot. They are on YouTube a lot. They use computers a lot. Um, so, and they've got this aspiration now to be social media influencers, right? And they see people making videos that take, you know, a 30 second video has got 20 million views and they think, oh, I can become a millionaire through 30 second videos. And so they're looking for the easy slice of life that way. We, the goal in Learning Blade is to take this concept of you can't be what you can't see and really blow it up. So that way students can start to see that STEM is not an acronym. It's not S period, T period, E period, M. It's 21st century problem solving. It's career opportunities. It is the future. And um, we want kids to do that. So I appreciate everyone for um, digging in there uh, and adding some, some details to the chat box. I personally, app design, Rick Stearns. I, I, I like to say, if I knew how to, if I was designing apps in college, which was 1990 something, um, you know, I would be millionaire right now if I had been taught app design at the proper time, right? And so, you know, there's just things that we want students to have these, these opportunities to know that these, these fields exist and that they're solving problems. That's you, Learning Blade's strategy is to provide context um, for when students say, hey, teacher, when will I ever use this? Um, Cedric, I'm feeling bad that you just saw this, but we'll, we'll get a little different as we, when we log in. But um, that question is asked universally in middle school and high school, around the country, probably around the world. 
Why? Middle schoolers are moving from concrete elementary students, concrete thinkers, it's the phase of development of the brain, to abstract. And it is an abstract, metacognitive, personal bubble question. How does what you're teaching me, Teacher Brown, how does that affect me and my future and my life? And so it's actually an important question. Students are yearning for relevance, for context, for how math relates to future jobs and careers. And our pre and post survey analysis is that Learning Blade, just by using it a little bit in your class, once a week, you know, Learning Blade Thursdays, Learning Blade Friday, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, they are learning about careers and how they connect to academics. And that's having an impact. And I'll share that research that we have on Learning Blade. But we do it while reinforcing academic standards. So I already talked about the 12 missions. But let me show you all a mission diagram. Um, so, you know, what this is is one diagram of the 12 missions in Learning Blade. It is a computer science mission. Um, in the chat box, do any of you teach computer science uh, essentials or intro to computer science? Uh, we have over 100 lessons in Learning Blade that you can use online, right? Distance learning, remote learning, or in classroom, uh, students doing computer science lessons. So I'm curious in that chat box if any of these uh, of our awesome attendees today, 52 people, that's great, are um, teach computer science. So looking at this mission, oh, Yes, Holly, I'm seeing your chat. All right, Kashandra, computer technology teacher. Glad you're in the room. So this is one of our two computer science missions. I'm gonna show you the other one. Um, and what you'll see is that, and this represents all the missions in Learning Blade, all 12 of them. So there's the, you know, we have a manufacturing mission. We've got a robotics mission. We've got an agriculture mission, um, local food learn about agricultural engineers and agronomists and microbiologists and how those people affect crop rotation and crop yields and organic farming. Um, we've got an energy mission. I actually was uh, uh, an Einstein fellow at the Department of Energy. I had never heard of the term power engineer. Uh, and so power engineer is uh, an, uh, an amazing career that's out there. And I was 40 plus years old. I didn't know what a power engineer was, right? Students can't be what they can't see. And quite honestly, teachers can't show students what they can't be if the teacher doesn't know. I didn't know. I taught math science for 10 years. I, there were so many careers. I didn't consider myself a career coach in middle school. And I think I missed that bus. But I think it's an important puzzle piece to add a layer onto your cake, your delicious education cake that you're baking this year, which is going to be a different flavor <laughs> than Latin previous years, but to definitely um, to add that career lens. Um, so as you can see, we've got a lot of different missions here. We even have for business teachers, we've got entrepreneurship missions. Um, hey, Melinda, thanks for joining. And um, so going back to this, you'll notice that for the careers like social media, right? We have a math lesson, a science lesson, an English lesson, and a social studies lesson. Those are lessons that are each 10 to 15 minutes long. So that means you have one hour of online lessons around social media, interdisciplinary. So they're making the relevant connections that math, science, English, social studies all relate to social media. So we're sort of breaking down that silo by using the context to show that all the connections across the silos. And there's good evidence that that causes some new connections to fire in the brain where st students stop thinking math is strictly mathematician, right? We want them to recognize that those math skills translate across industry across spectrum and will be really beneficial in your future so yeah dig into math kids even when it's hard especially when it's hard and being hard is a good thing um so i don't know i'm gonna just take a break from talking i want to ask a question in the chat box who uh let's just ask a question how many years have you been teaching we got 52 people on this webinar i bet we've got uh, I don't know. I'm going to guess we're going we're gonna to have hundreds of years of expertise, 25, 22, 14, 11. This is amazing. So because we have such expertise, I also would love for you guys to share in that 18 glorious years, Rick, Kimba, 16, Cedric, 6. This is amazing. Thank you all for joining. 
um, I'd love for you to share, um, you know, what is one thing, one secret you're going to bring back to school this year? Let's just use this chat box. We're talking about learning blade and careers. So maybe if you want to share a career relevant, uh, you know, a STEM secret or a STEM best practice or a career relevant best practice, let's just use that chat box for a minute to allow everyone to dip into the hundreds of years of expertise on this webinar. Um, and I know that people are typing, so I'm just going to be quiet for one minute here. As I show you our next slide. Man, it's just such an honor to be with all of you as you're getting ready for your school year. Um, I'm hoping that Learning Blade can be one of your STEM best practices, one of your CS best practices, one of your career relevant best practices. But um, I'm looking forward to see what you all type in that chat box on things, special message to each other on how to get the year started. I'm gonna share one thing that I found changed everything for me. Um, I guess I have the microphone, so I'm, I'm gonna share it uh, through a microphone. I had a principal say, I need you to send a positive email to a student every single day, to the parent. So instead of just, your student didn't do this, your student didn't do that, your student didn't do this, your student didn't do that, he's in trouble, she's in trouble. By the way, this student did something awesome today. That student did something awesome today. This student did something awesome today. Changed how I thought about my communications home to parents. It brought, when you send that positive home, it brought positivity back on you from the parent lens. And uh, it is a powerful strategy for engaging students and parents, especially the struggling student. You got that student that doesn't, doesn't try hard every day in class, and that day they do try hard, send that email home. That student's going to know that you saw it. Their parents are going to reference it. They're going to come back to you and say, ooh, I'm going to try it again for a second day. So that was just a, a really uh, changing practice for me. All right. I'm going to move on and uh, hopefully we're getting some chats in the chat box there. Um, Edward, first year. Let's all give a shout out to Edward in his first year of STEM. Um, so shout out, Edward. We're excited for you, man. Uh, so look at our flu outbreak mission here. You know, it's not the COVID outbreak. This is not talking about COVID. It's talking about flu or the spread of infectious disease. So it is very relatable. Um, we're talking about how to build vaccines, right? Uh, lessons on how, what is a vaccine, how to create a vaccine. What is an epidemiologist? That's Dr. Fauci, right? What is an epidemiologist? How, do they, how does the flu spread? Um, what are the methods and treatments of the flu? Uh, career, an English lesson on what is an epidemiologist. So doing that. But we're also connecting computer technicians, programmers, uh, social media, big data, to how those play a role in stopping the spread of flu. Y'all probably heard that there's, uh, they use GIS and big data technology to track the movement of cell phones in Tennessee to see the mobility of the population uh, as we were locked down. You know, they said 70% less traffic on the streets. And they knew that from pinging people's cell phones through metadata. So these are real careers, real technologies that's, that um, can be utilized uh, to inspire your students on how STEM, how CS, how uh, math and science, English, actually are having an impact on the world around us. So we also have our dolphin rescue mission. We've got a lot of different activities. This is great for sixth grade. You know, you get to play Disney Dolphin Tail, connect them with a true life, real story of prosthetics, and then get them to think about building prosthetics. There was a school, I think it was Sherwood Middle School, here in Chattanooga, where the students did our 3D printing lessons. We have lessons for 3D printers on prosthetics, where they took some of their toys and they cut off a leg, and then they measured the, 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 the amp amputated leg, and they built prosthetic parts to add to their toys using their 3D printers. Then they invited actual amputees to their class to learn about real life amputees and what it's like, and to talk to them and to, and to brainstorm with them solutions to some of their particular problems. So, you know, these are jumping off points to get students engaged and started in STEM and have conversations around all of these different things. So we're definitely seeing that um, in Learning Blade, and I'm about to log in and show you what it looks like from the student view, but 
this lack of career awareness limits students' um, sense of, of why they're doing academics and what it relates to. And what we found is that 94% of middle school students in particular, uh, this is research out of UMass, um, are making career-related decisions. Those decisions are what electives am I going to take? What am I doing after school? Will I try hard? What like, you know, certain decisions, not about I want this career, but about how they approach academics. And those are end up having career-related impacts. So, you know, Learning Blade right now for you guys, it's online. The, stu the lessons are self-paced. Uh, we had a teacher in our last session log in and say she loves that they're self-paced. They can work at home, they can work at their own pace. You are getting an LMS that's attached to this. It is giving you detailed information on student performance um, and on every activity they do. You can print out an Excel sheet and get that data as well. And, um, and then we have these PDF lessons that you can send for at-home activities for students without internet. And then coming this fall, okay, it's not ready yet, so I don't have a, a, a specific date, but we are developing, we're working with an app designer at Learning Blade so that students who do not have connectivity at home, but do have laptop, uh, maybe school laptop, can, when they are connected online, download the lessons, do all of the work offline at home, all of the online, what I'm gonna show you is online can now, will, will then be offline downloadable activities. Do the work, and when they reconnect to a hotspot via bus, via McDonald's, or via going to school one or two days a week, their work will be back uploaded for the teacher to see. So that's exciting. We're excited about that. Um, all right. So students log in, they see all these different tiles. There are something called express missions. I should just go back real quick. You'll notice that there's an asterisk here and an asterisk here and an asterisk here. So the full mission is 40 lessons. If you assign a student say, hey, I want you to do the flu outbreak mission, that's 40 lessons. That's about eight to 10 hours of work. Some teachers just want um, a shortened mission, and that's called the express mission. So we chose one lesson from each act, each tool and teammate, and that allows that to be an express version, 25% of the whole. So that shortens that up a little bit. How, oh, good. We've gotten some, um, um, some comments there. So Holly was saying it needs to be real world and relevant to the students. So that's her sort of feedback on my, my question to you all. Melinda was talking about empathy. Absolutely, have empathy for your students. <clears throat> um, and, um, I, you know, I, I personally, when it comes to empathy, I used a mantra, a saying I repeated over and over and over. Every year I had a new mantra, but one year my mantra when I opened the school door was to remind myself every year I opened the door, I said the mantra, students have issues, right? And so you just remember that these students are dealing with stuff that you don't know about. They're sometimes dealing with stuff that you don't know about. So you've got to have empathy when you, when you deal with their struggling uh, productivity or when you deal with their struggling classroom behavior. Maybe they didn't eat, right? They're, they're, maybe they've got, you know, situations at home. So empathy is huge, Melinda. I'm really glad you said that. Thank you for adding that. Um, and thanks, Brant. Yeah, the limb replacement. So uh, on that dolphin rescue, you'll see here, we have um, um, artificial limbs, a whole hour of curriculum on artificial limbs. And really that's what the machinist is doing in that flu outbreak lesson. All right, so uh, there's the full mission, the express mission. Um, students log in, there's a dashboard. All of these are hyperlinks. You can actually right click on the hyperlink, add it to your Google Classroom. So when the students log in, they could click the hyperlink and it'll send them right to where you want them to go. And students are being introduced to the careers while reviewing academics. So, you know, they're seeing what calibration is like in the real world, why it matters. I don't know if you've ever calibrated an instrument with students as, as a lesson. Um, it matters in the real world. Calibration, you've all probably heard about um, Mars. There was a mission to Mars by the European Space Agency. They collaborated with the Americans on it, actually. And it was a $500 million mission to Mars. The, the, the device didn't land on Mars. It blew up. It, it crashed. $500 million exploded. When they did the after action report, it was because one simple calculation wasn't converted from inches into metric system. And it caused $500 million to go down. So, you know, that simple attention to detail, calibration, um, you know, metric 
conversions. We have those in Learning Blade. They do matter. Um, so I want to share the research, and then I'm going to log in, and I'm going to show you the system. So Battelle has validated Learning Blade, uh, showing that 70% of students that log into Learning Blade are learning about new careers, um, that 76% of students uh, positively identify that they're learning about new technologies. So that's opening their view of STEM. I said this in the last session and someone made this comment, but if you ask a student, what is STEM? And they reply, science, period, technology, period, engineering, period, math, period, they don't know what it is. If you ask your students at the end of this school year, what is STEM? And they say something about career paths. They say something about opportunities. They say something about problem solving. You got it, boom, home run. So um, looking at this data, what we see, we were really excited about this post these bottom bullets are post, uh, pre and post test survey. So a matched up pre post test survey. 55% of students that logged into Learning Blade um, said they, they had an increased interest in careers in computer science. I call that seeing the trees in the forest. We were talking about this earlier. Students want these careers that they think the gamer, the app designer, social media influencer, the professional um, athlete, and they have a narrow view. How many of you have had students that want to be vets? Right. If you've taught, you've had a large group of students that want to be veterinarians when they grow up. Why? Because they have empathy. They want to help others. They want to help organisms. They want to help the environment. If they understood that, you know, when they stop wanting to be a vet, that there's other paths in those in those industries. Right. Um, they might be interested. So broad opening their view, seeing the paths in the forest, the trees in the forest. Doubling the number of students interested in becoming an engineer or scientist. That's a hundred percent increase. That's impressive. Uh, increasing student, this is amazing. Increasing students recognizing math is helpful in solving real world problems. We've gotten this data actually multiple times that Learning Blade logging in is causing an increase in students recognizing the relevance of math to the real world. Teacher, when will I ever use this? Oh, Learning Blade helped me figure, help students figure it out. You could do it any, a lot of different ways, but it's by adding career focus. That's what, that's what this is meant to be, a supplement, to enrich, to add that career focus, it's online. You can definitely power through, and if you get, if you have to go to distance learning. Second survey, second analysis here. This was Dr. Catherine Kendall. She used to teach it, um, or I'm not sure where she is currently, but she was a teacher in Metro Nashville. Got her EDD, did her PhD uh, or EDD on Learning Blade. She looked at two schools. One used Learning Blade, one didn't. The school that used Learning Blade, the students were 140 percent more likely to say they know what STEM workers do. Boom, that's pretty good stuff. Um, they were 70% more likely to wanna to talk about science with their peers. Um, and then these last two bullets really speak to research on girls in STEM. Um, so there's a great report. I, I think this would be an awesome PLC uh, or PLN activity. Read the report, why so few girls in STEM? Um, it's from the uh, American Association of University Women. So I have three daughters. I call myself a STEMinist, right? I want to make sure my daughter, who's outside right now, um, probably doing Khan Academy for fun, uh, that she, she has a desire to be a STEM professional. But the research shows that as they get towards middle school, that girls, that pressure, there's something going on, that that desire dissipates. And what, what we find is that it's because girls feel a need to be exceptional. They, 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 they think that they have to be, this is from this report, why so few women in STEM, they need to be the top of the class, right at the top. If they're a B, B plus student, which is awesome, and they're good at math, and they're good at science, they don't feel like they can be a STEM professional because they think they got to be the tops of the list. And so we got to do a better job of showing girls role models in STEM, also showing them um, stories of, of, of successful women in STEM. Same thing for minority students. We have to paint the picture for students of people succeeding in STEM that look like your student. It's a girl in STEM. It's an African-American in STEM. It's a Latino in STEM. Latino girls are the least likely to participate in the STEM workforce. And that's a shame. We got to change that. My daughters are Latino. Um, so anyways, so these two bullets are saying that students that logged into learning, but because they're doing career lessons, STEM math science lessons, but at a grade level, at a middle school activity level, 
and succeeding. They're saying, oh, wait a sec, STEM's not too hard, I can do that. STEM's not too much, I can do that. So I'm real excited about that. Um, Tennessee students have completed over 1 million lessons in Learning Blade. So we're hoping that your school will join that, uh, get on that bus this year and help out. Um, uh, question, do you all have a list of field trips or other go see uh, themes and it's capstones for the courses? Not field trips so much to say, Daniel, but let me show you our automotive manufacturing. So when you take students on field trips, I know lots of students go to a farm at some point in their, um, in their curriculum, or they take high school students to go see manufacturing centers. Use the Learning Blade lessons in prep for that, to build that dialogue. Um, so that's a great question. Um, metric versus standard, yeah. Something that will pique their, en their entrance. All right, so um, let me go log in and show you what Learning Blade looks like live. Okay, so you go to, by the way, for all of you on this call, this webinar, this thing that we're doing, this virtual Tennessee CTE conference, um, you can get your license by just going to learningblade.com slash Tennessee. If you're a district personnel and you want it for all your schools, we can do that. We can create your account. So you would just create an account for your district. Um, if you use Clever, we're a Clever Ready program. We can turn it on in Clever for you or actually, your district needs to turn it on in Clever, but it's easy to do and I can help with that. And then you just fill out this form and click send it and you get your license to learning with. So whether you log in through Clever or through the web, which is what I'm doing, you click the login button and then you use your uh, username and password. You'll notice for, for my Google Classroom teachers or teachers, uh, one of the quickest ways to get students logged into Learning Blade is to use this student self sign up code. So when you log in with your administrator teacher account, you can create a class and then that class generates a class code. You would just share that class code with your student, they enter it in, and what it does is it puts them on this form here and um, they then fill out their first name, their last name, their username and their password. Now they're creating their own usernames and passwords. So I say, be careful. I would never want my students to create their own usernames and passwords. Um, it's gonna be a nightmare of trying to uh, reset passwords that they forgot. So there's two real suggestions. One, just have them use the username and password that they log into their school computer with. Uh, maybe that's their email address or their lunch number, what have you. Or the second one, and this has worked successfully for many schools, you tell them what the formula is. All right, kids, I want you to log in. Your username should be first name dot last name dot um, CHS for whatever middle school you are, and then, or high school. And then your password, all of you are gonna use the same password. It's gonna be Falcons. Great, and then they can log in now. Okay, so once you get logged in, uh, and I'm gonna log in right now and show you, students see the different tiles. Uh, Justin's asking if we're compatible with ClassLink. Justin, yes, but let me just explain it real quickly. Uh, your district-wide administrator, so if you're ClassLink or Clever, it goes to the district. Um, if you're ClassLink, then what Clever has what's called a patch. Um, it's technological jargon, I'm not good at it, but we can send that little patch to your ClassLink administrator and they can patch in through Clever. So yes, it does work. We have schools that use ClassLink. What type of classes are in the classroom license? Okay, Lisa, great question. Uh, there's no cost, right? Uh, so you can just go to learningblade.com slash Tennessee uh, and request your license. Thank you for that question, Lisa. So I can clarify that for, all, for everyone. Um, that's what you gotta do. Just go to learningblade.com slash TN and then as well as training. So Lisa, I'm not sure what your role is, but if you're a district per personnel and you want to train staff in the district, I'm happy to schedule one-on-one uh, -on -one training or group training, virtual training um, as well at no cost. Um, so when the students get in, they see those full missions, those express missions. We've got that hack attack mission, our flu outbreak mission. I'm going to show you now our manufacturing a concept car. In Tennessee, Manufacturing is a big deal. 
right? I mean, there, it's, a, it's actually a really big deal in Tennessee. Um, I believe the Nissan plant in Smyrna at one point, I don't know if it still is, it was two years ago, uh, had more cars roll off its assembly line than any other plant in the world. So that's Tennessee. Um, so what you could do, and, and one of those questions was about field trips. I know that <clears throat> I've got actual news articles about Learning Blade where schools use Learning Blade in two different ways. One is in preparation for field trips to a Toyota plant, a Nissan plant, a Volkswagen in Chattanooga. You could <clears throat> have students learn about mechatronics, have students learn about paint technology, assembly lines in preparation. So when they get there and they see it, they've got the vocabulary, they've done the experience, they've learned it. Um, as well as learn about these careers. So I'll go to welder, for example. You'll notice there's a science lesson about welding, uh, a social studies lesson, an artistic license lesson, uh, the cost design, and there's also a video. So you could use these videos, distance learning, virtual classroom, plug it in, have the, um, you, and then share that video with your students. Uh, you could ask them to flip the classroom. You could watch the video in advance of, what you're going to do in class and then use the references that you have from that video noticed female protagonist here um, getting busy doing some looks like uh, some welding and uh, then there's the video it's only two minutes long some manufacturing workers like their job supersized oh, can you hear structural it? metal fabricators and fitters construct enormous metal objects from tanks and water towers to frames for buildings and bridges. Though the projects can be massive, the work is quite precise. Following blueprints or drawings, they develop patterns to build metal parts. They use a broad array of hand, electric, and hydraulic tools to align and fit parts to so specifications. The they use the video, they are asked academic questions. Were you paying attention, um, right, to what the video was asking you? Um, So some of the things they're gonna need here. And then, you know, learn about that career and how much you can make. And I wanna point out, in Tennessee, it's amazing, amazing. I am personally amazed that community college is free, right? Tennessee Promise, uh, Tennessee Reconnect. So we've got this opportunity to really inspire a lot of students. Um, if I had time, and I don't think I do, but there is a video that my friend Joe T. Wood showed me. It's called Success in the New Economy. And really this, this video uh, is, what is, is a must see. And what it talks about is how 60% of students that go to university drop out. And that more kids than ever are going to university. So if they're dropping out of university, they're not finishing, they're saddled with debt, then they have less options. Community college as an initial step should be, should be lauded. It should be, it should be raised up in schools as an amazing thing. And um, in Learning Blade, we're trying to connect with some of those community college pathways as well. Uh, the questions come, are there lessons related to human lifespan development or family living? Um, yeah, Kim, but there are for our facts teachers. Um, uh, I can show you some of those lessons, and so I will do that in a second. Thank you. So, uh, next page. Every, every, um, so that's just one lesson in Learning Blade. Uh, here's like uh, a math lesson as an example. Is anyone excited about the new Ford Bronco? I don't know. I read a lot of articles about it. Um, so, you know, there's just, Learning Blade, they're reading, right? We feel that's a critical college and career ready skill. Um, and so we're really reinforcing that. And here they're going to think about the cost of designing a car and the materials involved, right? So here we're looking at the cost of steel at 40 cents per pound. Now we're gonna ask students to figure out, all right, we got 2,100 pounds and the cost is now 45 cents. Now you could use estimation, which is what I'm using, to get the correct answer. You could also break out pad and pencil. Um, but we were created by the former vice presidents of ACT. Um, and I think you see some, some structural similarities in what we're trying to achieve with our online uh, assignments here. Oh, I, 
to point out every question is followed by the correct answer. And so that does allow for students to, um, that does allow for students to work at their own self pace, right? If they're doing this at home, they're not, they, even though they might not get question number three correct, they can move on to question number four. Uh, they're not waiting, they're not locked out, right? So now we're doing the, the same thing with the cost of plastic. Let's say you get the question wrong. It gave me some advice, right? Um, I can't actually go forward. I got to try a second time. All right, I tried it a second time. I got it wrong. Now I did not get my gold star. My grade has gone down. You, the teacher, have information on student performance. Again, followed by correct answer. All right, so that's like a math lesson. Uh, just want to show you there's our, there's English lessons, looking at English standards. So that's where we're reinforcing standards. Um, and so using Learning Blade in a variety of classes is beneficial to developing the student um, from the standards perspective, but really also from that career awareness perspective. So you have, you have brazing, soldering, and riveting, right? Learning some basics about welding. But what is the central idea of the reading segment? Classic English standard-based question. Can you print out the central idea? Um, again, fall by the correct answer. So we have um, a lot of different style of questions. I'm just going to get it wrong so I can go on to the next question. I'm not. Uh, it's hard for me to focus when I'm doing it. Uh, the correct answer was welding. You know, different styles of questions um, and really uh, all the while connecting students to careers and technologies. You have 400 of these, right? So I've only shown you two. Um, there's a lot for you to pick and choose from. I call it going to the Learning Blade Buffet uh, where you can use the, the diagrams in Learning Blade to sort of look at the contextual concepts um, and get started. Go ahead, Paula. Uh, did you see the two questions? I, I apologize. Uh, are there any lessons related to human lifespan development or family living? Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and answer that now. And then and, the next one. And then there was another one, uh, well, two more. What type of cost is the li classroom license? Yep, covered that. And is Learning Blade? Purpa? Yeah, compliant. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, I believe. So uh, I should know this, and I apologize. FERPA is the um, the student. Is that the student side of things? Uh, the student, the student um, compliance. We are, uh, and you can read that statement here. Um, let me see. On the log, was it on the login page? I got to remember where we put that. Uh, we do have that information somewhere here, our privacy policy. So there's our, our FERPA information right there. You can go look at that. Is Learning Blade translatable or is there a Spanish version? The answer to that question is no. There is not a Spanish version. There may be some apps you can use that will do the translation for you. I, I should have pointed out on every page, there's an audio track. It's reading in English on every single page. So that, Jack, can be helpful for your students as well. Um, so what I want to do with the time remaining is I want to um, log in as the teacher or administrator and show you what they see. So when you log in as an administrator um, and you'll get your learning blade license when that happens, you can create more staff. So you can create 10 staff can use this, three staff. You can just more, more than one person in the school can use it. You can create students. I showed you the class code using class codes, but you can also import CSV file of students in learning blade through your admin account. Um, and so that's something you can do in Learning Blade. Um, on your staff menu, um, yeah. So I'm gonna log in now as the teacher. And when you log in as a teacher, there is this student view button. This is brand new this year for anyone that's used Learning Blade in the past. This will launch a demo of Learning Blade. It's not gonna keep track of your, of your performance, but it'll allow you into Learning Blade to see the student view, and then you can click on that to go back to your teacher view. 
So in a Zoom meeting, for example, you could launch lessons to share on your screen with students very simply and very easily. Um, so when you get to here, you can click on classes. You can create more classes by clicking the create class button. Um, and then when you create a class, it becomes a hyperlink. And inside of that class is where you can add assignments. Um, so with this feature, you can add assignments. So in learning mode, you could assign the whole mission. I could say, all right, I want you to do the whole mission, Dolphin Rescue. You can actually make your own sort of missions by choosing the careers yourself in Learning Blade. So I know that there was a high school PLTW teacher on this session, right? That's where I have heard from other high school engineering teachers. I have a video from uh, Coach Joshua Payne talking about how he uses the, the engineering careers as a way of introducing students to the different engineering um, lessons. And so that would appear in the student uh, task list. You could do it that way. Or you can get drilled down, my middle school teachers, my ninth grade teachers, you can get into the standards, right? And you can say, I wanna reinforce ratios and proportions because that's what my team is doing this week. And so you could look for lessons that cover ratios and proportions. You can look for lessons on density because your science teacher is doing the same thing as the STEM teacher. You're both covering lessons in density. Um, you can get to your state standards by coming to Tennessee and clicking on it. Takes a second. And then it's showing you the standards. So this is congruence. Um, and you can launch the lesson to preview it by clicking here. Um, or you can also search by um, standard here. So if you really knew that you wanted to cover the standard um, 8.g.a.1.a, you could search for it through here. I should, it should work, but sometimes it's got to be perfect. Anyways, I'm not going to spend, you can also search by context. So if you're looking for the different standards um, or the different lessons by context, you can pull them out this way. So find all the math lessons in Learning Blade, um, right? And you can see what they're, the standards are covering, the keywords, the topics. So this is searchable. Um, the thing I want to really spend the last five or 10 minutes on is that toolbox. So I've spent, remember I said most teachers use the online, so I spent most of my time on the online. But for the correctional facility teacher, for the teacher that said that you don't have um, the internet connectivity in the classroom, you can, teachers can use these lessons here. Um, these are folders, and each of them are filled with a, with a lot of different PDF lesson plans. So, um, so you can click on these. So family and consumer sciences, I just wanna answer that question before I forget. If we look at our lessons by career clusters, um, we do have some lessons for sort of the family, uh, not sort, not really a life projection, but we have things on, um, on uh, healthy living, on, on how to eat fresh food, as well as other careers um, that you can look at in here. So that's your downloads here under lesson cluster. So these are open-ended problem solving, using the engineering design process. Uh, we call them design thinking. Um, so you could use these. I don't know if anyone's, you've all heard of the egg drop activity for a STEM project. Have you ever heard of the, um, have you ever heard of the potato chip challenge? And go ahead, uh, Paul, there's some more questions. Sorry, no, but uh, I see someone uh, video disconnected. I don't know if it, they're going to start disconnecting or not since it was supposed to end at 11.15. Oh, 11 I, I, think, I think they said they give you 10 minutes or so All after right. that. Well, so, I apologize. I, I, I missed that time stop. So I'm going to just show you that there's all these different lesson plans here um, in the mission challenges. And I'm going to answer any questions that you have left as well as share your keyword. What's the keyword, Paula? Florida. Okay. The like the state, Florida. I'll put it in the chat. Keyword is Florida. Are there any additional questions? Let me come here. I sadly can't get back into the session. Okay. Um, so please leave your emails as, you're, as you exit the room and uh, I will send you the presentation and some additional resources as well. 
Uh, I just want to wish everyone an amazing school year. Stay healthy, stay safe. Y'all are frontline heroes. Um, just, I, I can't thank you enough for what you're going to do this year to uh, keep kids uh, safe and keep their minds active, especially at a time when they need that. So yeah, please, I see people leaving their emails. Thank you. I'm going to email you the presentation uh, with additional supporting materials, as well as my contact information, so I can be a resource for you this school year. Get after it. Hey, Dr. Ellis. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. Thank you for doing an amazing job with the chat box. I mean, sorry, with the closed captioning, Brittany. That was awesome of you. I was going to show people computer science relevance lessons and activities and learning blade, but uh, y'all are logging out. So uh, have a great, great day, great conference. I'm just going to keep this on until everyone logs out. If anyone that's still in the room uh, has questions, maybe I can unmute everybody. Allow to talk. Thank you, Melinda. Very kind of you to say that. Thank you, Julie. Julia. Julia, your name looks familiar. I feel like maybe we've um, interacted in the past. Thanks, Rick. We love Lakeland. Keep it up this year. Go get it. All right, I'm going to close the session. Thank you again, Paula.